Hey, how y'all doing? It's another episode of True Seeking Trucker. We're getting to our Father's Word in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33. With that, let's begin with a moment of prayer. Father God, as we get into this chapter, um, may we see things through your eyes and hear things through your ears. Father God, we seek your face today, just for today. I cannot rest on the laurels of yesterday. I must pick up the cross or follow Christ. I must put on the armor of God and I, we pray for protection from our almighty father, from the evil one, that he put a shield over us and this ministry and we be able to cut through the lies with the sword of truth, which is that your holy word, father. Father God, not only that, we're not going to sit on our hands. We're going to also pray that you engage the enemy your will be done, not ours. So you are the commander in chief in this army, in the Lord's army, because you are the Lord of hosts. Father God, we ask that you engage the enemy when you see right, because we, yes, we do um, forgive our brothers and sisters, but these fallen angels, we, uh, we don't play with them. We show them who's boss, because why? Because we take the authority that you've given us and we exercise that right, Father. We're tired of getting pushed around and bullied in this world by these damnable entities. And we don't want no more part of it, Father. We want to push back. Why? Because they're damned and they're going to hell. And there's a place in the lake of fire for them. Why? Because they sinned against God so great that that's what, they, that's what you judge towards them, Father. Hell was not made for mankind, but men will choose their way to hell. Father God, I pray for those suffering in sin and bondage that don't even know that they're in sin and bondage. I pray for them to wake up and the veil of sin be taken from their eyes so they can have a moment of clarity, so they can see where a pivotal point in their lives, they can change their ways and say, oh my God, come into my life. I made such a huge mistake. I repent. Please, Father God, I, I ask you, and you know, he's waiting for those words. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the authority of, of his blood, I ask for forgiveness. In Yeshua, the love of his people, to come to back to him, to cry out to him. Because without him, we're nothing. We're leaves flying in the wind, waiting to land and decay. Such a solemn ending, but that's the price of sin, Father. And you declared it, and you will not change your words on that. And we hope to understand this chapter and to uh, draw near to you. And anybody that's suffering in silence, know that you're not alone. Reach out to someone you trust. And know God will never leave you nor forsake you. And let's be praying in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. All right, let's get going. Chapter 33. It's really cold right now, so if you see me bundled up, just know that uh, it's like in the 20s right now and there's ice all over the place in this part of the country. And uh, I'm actually shut down right now. I uh, had a a hiccup in some of my paperwork so they shut me down for a couple of days maybe it's take it as a blessing right people are slipping and sliding all over the ro all over the road and our prayers be out with them so what i do when i got downtime this is my real job right here this is this is what i'm set to do and this is what i will do um anytime i can right i gotta make a living but in the same way that's not my job this is it so let's get going. Chapter 33, verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time, while he was shut up in the court of the prison, saying, To thus saith the Lord of the Maker, there of the Lord that formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. Show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call unto the Lord Yahweh. Yahweh. Right? Yahweh, call to him, ask him, 
you can say in your native tongue too, but it doesn't hurt to use the original language as well. Um, remember, Jeremiah is in prison for what? Obeying God. But God never left him. It's just a moment right now where he's uh, coming to a, an affliction where he's coming to his greatest reaching out to God. And some of these, are, this is some a great chapter with some great verses in it that we can put in our memory banks to always bring up. This chat, this verse three, call unto me and I will answer thee. Show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And call to for wisdom, knowledge of his word, um, the will for him, God's will for your life, um, the will for your kid's life. Your, your family, direction, anything you can think of and things that you can't think of, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you to pray. I do. He's the expert. I'm just a servant. I'm no better, no no less than any man or woman or child in this, in this world. Right? God will judge. And people, um, people choose their own hell. And some people choose their way into being shunned from society. Um, if there's anything salvageable and they and they want to come to the Lord, we welcome them, a repentant spirit, a true repentant spirit with open arms into the church. But um, some won't. All right. Verse four. For thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the houses of the city and concerning the houses of the kings of Judah, which are thrown down by the mounts and by the sword. So God, again, for emphasis. It's telling them that Zedekiah is going down, like I said, and the kings of Judah are thrown down by the mounts and by the sword. They're going to fail in their battle. They're going to, they're not going to be successful. Five, they came to fight with the Chaldeans, but it's to fill them with dead bodies of men whom I've slain in my anger and in my fury. And for all those weak wickedness, I have hid my face from the city. God has taken his hedge of protection away. Because they've lived in great sin and would not hearken unto the prophet Jeremiah to repent and turn back to the Lord. God was giving them all kinds of ways to survive. I mean, I hope you're following this. People will say, well, God's, you know, such a loveful God. Why did he allow this? Well, I mean, he has a responsibility to righteousness and to holiness and to truth and to justice. And to um, all these uh, virtues that are we look at as a as you know extraordinary and 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 uh, you know worthy of of instilling in our own lives, he's everything and he's perfect in him, right? He is the embodiment of perfection and purity. So when he asked for somebody to get to change their ways. He's showing a great mercy. You think men would not would show this kind of mercy? Oh, I, I tell you, they would have probably shoved an, a sword in somebody's heart within a, a 30 days. Even the most um, forgiving man. Or they would have walked away. Right? Understand this. Compare what how God handled this compared to what you know about men. And there, hands down, God is way more merciful than any other man in the world at any point at any time. So I hope you see that. I can't, um, I can't uh, say that enough. Verse 7. Uh, excuse me, let's go verse 6. Behold, I will bring it to health to cure, and I will cure them, and I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. All right, God still wants to heal them. Seven, and I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return, and we will build them as the first. So they will become one, right? The book of Ezekiel talked about this too. Um, the one, two twigs becoming one, intertwined, all right? They'll come back. Um, I believe it was sticks, not twigs. So Eight, and I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. See, God doesn't just see the sins they did, they did, but also the encouragement, the instigation, 
the um, stumbling blocks that were laid, not just by the devil and his fallen angels, but their fellow men in the sister cities that surrounded them. But the thing is, when you know the truth, you're held to more responsibility. So that's why Israel and tribes of Israel and tribe of Judah fell so hard. They fell so hard because their their um, punishment was seven times harder than theirs in Leviticus 26. Um, I can't recall the verse, but you can take a look at Leviticus 26. And um, and with that, um, they had their chances to repent. They had their chances to leave the city gates and surrender to the Chaldeans army and, and live. But the ones who held back, their time is up. Line in the sand. Don't cross it. Nine. And it shall be... It shall be to me a name of joy and praise and honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good I do unto them, and they shall fear and trembling of the goodness for all the prosperity that I will procure unto thee, unto it. So God will restore. God will give back the, the remnant that left and was obedient. God will return and restore. Why? Because they're trying. They were steered. They were steered astray by their leaders and their priests, right? Their priest of Baal. And um, and uh, Baal, uh, Baal worshipers, I mean, that's just the most abominable thing to God. You know, they, they throw babies in the fire as for uh, blood sacrifices, right? You think that doesn't happen today? I promise you it happens today. It's sad. It does. It's in the dark right now, but... The way society is heading, it's going to get so bad, it's going to be public. Mark my words. And I mark, and my words are from studying the word of God and understanding where we're headed. Verse 10. Thus saith the Lord, again there shall be heard in this place, which ye say shall be desolate without man, without beast, even in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. They are desolate without a man or without inhabitants or without a beast. Um, that's what's happening. Remember I talked about desolation. First is a spiritual desolation. Then um, a call to return to repentance. And when that isn't heard, then the, 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 the land shall become desolate. Where nothing shall grow. No beast shall live. Um, it should just be barren, right? And that's uh, so we can see the physical world um, follows after the spiritual world. The spiritual world is more important than our physical, right? Okay, verse 11. The voice of joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom. Who's the bridegroom? That's Jesus Christ. And the voice of the bride. Who's the bride? God's church, his beloved, his his true and faithful. The voice of them that shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts. For the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever. So this is a future foretelling event. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember, I, I brought this up many times. There's similar verses to this. Um and I'll just read them. It'll be um, Jeremiah 7, 34, Jeremiah 16, 9, Jeremiah 25, 10. And I believe this is the fourth and final one, Jeremiah 33, 11. And there's also a very similar one. Um, <clears throat> uh, I believe it's in uh, Revelations. This is for all y'all that want to do cross references. Right? And see, um. One second. 
Okay, so it was uh, Revelations 18.23, and the light of the candle, which is the truth of God, right? Shall shine no more at all of thee, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by their sorceries they sh their nations shall be deceived. So what we got here is a... Uh, so we got here is a a, a point where um, uh, there's a, a difference uh, in in what's happening. This is the point of Revelations where it seems like there's going to be nobody speaking or standing in the in the in the gap between um, the people that are led astray to walking towards destruction. Right. Um, you can see the symbolism with the bride and the bridegroom. And like I spoke before, don't want to be redundant about it. But um, if anybody has any questions about that, we can talk more about it. So going back to Jeremiah 33. Um, Jeremiah 33. Where yet, Jeremiah? Chapter, chapter 33, verse 12. And it reads, For thus saith the Lord of hosts. Again, in this place which is desolation without a man and without a base, and all the cities thereof shall be a habitation of shepherds, causing their flock to lie down. All right. Verse 13. In the cities of the mountains, and the cities of the vale, and the cities of the south. And in the land of Benjamin, in the places about Jerusalem, and the cities of Judah, shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that telleth him, saith the Lord. So, what we got here is you got to understand about something about an animal husbandry, at the times of a uh, of a shepherd and his sheep. So, um, you got here. In the verse 13, that said, uh, the, the flocks pass again under the hands of him that telleth. What is a telleth, right? What is a teller at a bank? A count, right? Just the same thing as someone who, uh, who counts the sheep, right? He's got the shepherd's staff, and as they pass underneath it, he counts them, right? You got to do head counts with animals. Right, some you'll never know if, you, especially when you got large flocks or herds or whatever, um, you you'll end up with uh, missing animals, and it, depending on the predator carrying it away, some won't devour it right then and there. They'll 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 grab it and they'll run away with it. So you'll um you won't even know it's missing until it takes about three four away. But um, the good shepherd always counts his flocks and uh his herds and he'll um leave the 99 to go for the one right what a great shepherd the best shepherd let's go ahead and give god some praise in psalms 118 oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good because his mercy endureth forever let israel now say that his mercy endureth forever three let the house of aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever four let them now that fear the lord say that his mercy endureth forever. All right. <clears throat> Going back to Jeremiah 33, 14. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Again, the restoration, bringing them back home. 15. In those days, at the time, Will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up into David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. Again, there are no more male heirs in um, the tribes of Judah that will sit on the throne. Um, there are two daughters that survived in King Zedekiah's, uh, with King Zedekiah. And uh, with that, they had a... Uh, um, went to Egypt with Jeremiah at the end of, of this 
book. And after that, they went to the islands of um, uh, uh, Ireland, Scotland, and eventually England through their bloodlines, through the monarchy. You got to look up this this book called, but written by Raymond E. Capt. It's called uh, Jacob's uh, Jacob's Pillar, uh, the Stone of Scone. Right, excellent book. Gives you some great insight. But again, it's historical events. You know, all things that men write are flawed. Um, only I trust the word of God at 100 percent at all the time. If anything's wrong with uh, when it comes to the word of God, I, I it's not the word of God that I would um, question. Even with myself, I'd question my perception and uh, my ignorance. But I'd never question God's word. Right. So that's when people must understand that we don't always get the interpretations right but it's not an excuse to just belligerently discount the whole uh holy word um everybody has their road to walk okay let's go ahead and finish off 15. the branch of righteousness shall grow up into david and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land verse 16 in those days shall judah be saved and jerusalem shall dwell safely that is named wherewith that he shall be called the Lord our righteousness because he is righteous. He is perfect. All right. Um, another time where we can do a cross reference is Isaiah 61, 10 through 11. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God for he hath clothed me with garments of salvation. He hath covered me with my robe of righteousness through his righteousness, right? Christ's righteousness are we clothed in when we accept him when we he when we he uh, call for his um, blood to cover us in uh, for our sins okay continuing as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels remember the bridegroom and the bride what they stand for right hope you, you caught it for as the earth bringeth forth her bud and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Hallelujah. Um, verse uh, 17. For thus saith the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. The next king of Israel will be Christ. 18, neither shall the priests, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings, to kindle meat offerings, and to do sacrifice continually. And remember, um, meat offerings and burnt offerings are uh, uh, abolished. They are nailed to the cross. Hebrews 10, 1 through 10 will specifically knock that out of the park. Don't let anybody deceive you with that. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, understand what that righteousness is that we're talking about. We're going to go to Revelations 19, 7 through, um, I believe, was it 13? Let me get there. Okay, yep. Revelation 19, 7 through 13, it reads, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. So that righteousness we're clothed in is the righteousness of Christ. 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. There it is. There is that clothing. Clean white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. 9. And he said unto me, Right blessed are they that are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. This is important. This is end times where we're going to come home to, to the Lord. It's the marriage supper of the Lamb. And see, he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. 10. And I fell at the feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and for thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus in the spirit of prophecy. 11, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon it was called Faithful and True, 
in the righteousness he doth judged and to make war. Christ coming on his war horse. Christ came at first for peace. Now he's coming back to take claim. 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire and his head was had, were many crowns and he had name written on it that no man knew but he himself. 13. And he was clothed in the vesture dipped in blood with his name is called the word of God. Dipped, the dipped of blood and his blood, right? Um, some say it's the blood of martyrs. Um, it could be too, you know, the ones that died for Christ. Um, I, I'm not sure on that one what the blood but I know it is a blood and uh, I never got around to that. So maybe if you want to help me out, you can uh, put something in the comment section. So it can be proactive. You help me, I help you. To get the bigger picture, we got to help each other, right? Here we go. Back to Jeremiah. We're going to verse 19. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, saying, 20, Thus saith the Lord, if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, that there should not be the day and the night in the season. 21, Then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant, that he shall not have a son to reign upon this, his throne, and with the Levites and the priests by the ministers. So, under Jewish law, um, the daughters of of a king could pass on the inheritance. So the fact that God um, allowed King Zedekiah's daughters to to um, survive shows that he did hold his part to his covenant that there would be a seed that sat on the throne, right? But as far as male heirs, there will be no more male heirs. It's Christ Jesus who will be the male heir. The rest are um, are were married into other kingdoms. Um, like I said, I read that I uh, told you that book to read um, by Raymond E. Capt, and uh, it's an awesome book. So, um, verse twenty-two: As of the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured. So I will multiply the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites and the minister unto them. So host of heaven right cannot be numbered you ever hear that saying well if the bible was true um why didn't it ever say anything about other life outside of earth it did right here and there you just got to know how to um decipher the hosts are the army um the angel army right the host being an army heaven being above us right in the sky in a space right that's not humankind right that is specifically saying there's life outside of mankind and it cannot be numbered so god's been busy way before he made mankind okay so you understand that so why haven't we seen him well the ones that are supposed to not interfere with with mankind in their development have listened and they've been held off to um minimal interaction right because that's what they're supposed to do that's what they're instructed to do but some didn't listen and we know that this in the genesis 6 book and um about the fallen angels seeing that the daughters of men were fair and and uh created uh offspring right you can check out those uh strong concordance 66 35 and uh Yeah, I think I only put one. I thought I put two, but yeah, you can check uh, for that angel army. What it says, it does say army in. Uh, it's called uh, Saba. It's a Saba. Um, check that out if you want to go deeper in that. Okay, verse twenty-three. As the host of heaven. Oops, I read that. Twenty-four. No, 23. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, 24, considerest thou not what this people have spoken, saying, the two families which the Lord hath chosen, he hath even cast them off. Thus he hath despised my people, that they should be no more a nation before them. 
25, thus saith the Lord, if my covenant be not with the day and night, and if not the appointed ordinance of heaven and earth. So God's covenant is with the law of, of the natural law of heaven and earth as well. Like I said before, God has a responsibility to his creation, to govern, to protect, to um, watch over. So he made natural laws like the law of gravity is being one of them, right? They won't change. That God, uh, we can always know that it's an unshakable truth, right? 26 to finish the chapter. Then I will cast away the seed of Jacob and David, my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. Again, Christ will be that next king in the in Israel. Now, don't get don't get confused because the devil is going to try to be that Christ, that false Christ. Well, he will be that false Christ. He's going to play like he's Jesus, and he comes during the sixth trumpet. You know about him as the um, in Revelations as that beast that um, has that looks like a lamb and speaks like a dragon, right? The symbolism right there is is just on point. I mean, if you can't get that, um, you're going to have to study a little harder because that's really, we all know that the only time really after that that um, the lamb is, is uh, discussed, the lamb slain by the, for the foundations of the earth is Jesus Christ, God's sacrificial lamb, right? The lamb the unblemished, the lamb without spot. So you can check that out. Genesis uh, 50, 24. And Joseph unto his brethren and die, I will surely visit you and bring you out of the land into the land which we swear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. This is, uh, this was, um, oh, let me get to it. This was the death of joseph and uh he this is the point where they were going to return back to the land of milk and honey which was jerusalem right so that was the old, other time where these three names were mentioned in the bible that i believe is significant for this study that they will return and they have 1948 and they continue to return and uh, we keep our eyes on israel we keep our eyes on uh um, what goes on over there and in that we can um we can have a be watchmen and sound the alarm for our people but with that um want to say you have a great rest of your day god bless you in the name of jesus christ amen